My name is Mateusz Front, and um, I'm a multimedia engineer at Software Mansion, and I'm also a React Native developer for like 10 days. Uh, so it's going to be fun, at least for me. <clears throat> and uh, this is going to be about making calls, uh, but let me show you what precisely. So let's say you have a simple application or barely any application, and what we want to have is this same application, but with a video chat within it. So you might wonder why actually should we do or what would we, would we want to do uh, such a thing? Well, uh, basically for the very same reason why you have a normal regular chat embedded in your application and you do not redirect user to some other app. It's one click away, so it's a really good UX, uh, uncomparable to any external like application. You also have full control over what's happening, uh, who connects to whom, uh, how the data flows, where it flows, what is the quality, and also you can customize uh, your application to perfectly like fit so the video chat like embedded into, you, into UI properly can look like within the application, like a part of the application. Uh, so since we know uh, what are we going to do and why, uh, let me show you the plan for this presentation. I will start by uh, saying a few words about WebRTC, which is a standard that we are going to rely on today, and about Membrane and its implementation of WebRTC that we are going to use. And then I will try my, my very best to do a live demo of uh, converting a simple application to an application enhanced with a video chat functionality. So let's start. WebRTC is a standard for real-time real communication, and this basically means it tells you what protocols to use to stream live media properly. Sometimes it even tells you how to use these protocols to make it work or to make them all work together. WebRTC is backed by Google and it's defined at this page. Uh, what, are the, what are the good parts of WebRTC? Well, it exists. Uh, so we have a standard that we can implement, uh, that many parties can implement, and they can communicate together, they can build video conferencing systems, then they can stream any media. But this is not, only the, uh, this is not the only uh, good part. Uh, well, actually, many parties implement this uh, standard, and that, that's why we have API uh, in browsers and APIs on mobiles. Uh, also, WebRTC is designed in a way that it gives you a potential to achieve a good quality if you use that properly, if you use the, the tools properly. Uh, good quality of the streams, of course, for network conditions like bandwidth or, or latency or jitter, etc. Uh, but unfortunately, there are also bad parts of WebRTC. Uh, so I said that is a choice of protocols, and some of these protocols don't really fit there. Uh, so uh, the end user is responsible uh, at the very end uh, of handling all the inconsisten inconsistencies among this uh, stuff. Also, it's 1.0, but um, like no uh, implementation follows the standard 100%. Even Google's implementation doesn't follow it 100%. And Google is who creates the standard, yeah? Uh, so it's a little bit like uh, CSS some time ago. Uh, so it's basically, theoretically, it works everywhere. And the same way, in practice, you have to like, deal with uh, separate implementations uh, differently. Also, in most like, real-life real scenarios uh, of using WebRTC, you need a media server to relay your traffic. And the media servers that are available are not really easy to use. They're a bit hard to configure, uh, tough to talk to, um, and this is quite important since you have to uh, like connect to them, interact with them to make them work um, with your app, with authentication stuff, etc. Uh, also, WebRTC is uh, scattered a lot across a lot of documents. I said it's defin defined under that page, but um, that page actually redirects you to many, like 
many RFCs, and these RFCs redirect you to even more RFCs. So to find out what's going on in some particular piece of this whole ecosystem, that's not a simple task. Um, but uh, if WebRTC is not perfect, then maybe we could use something else. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing else uh, that is uh, so popular and so usable, so we have to use WebRTC anyways. But here comes Membrane, and Membrane is a multimedia streaming framework that I, uh, with my colleagues, are creating at Software Mansion. And uh, it, uh, it is targeted for live streaming. Uh, it started as a radio broadcasting engine. Now it handles much, much more, like offline processing, transcoding, and WebRTC too. So why Membrane could help us? Well, we try to make it developer friendly, so like pleasant to use, but uh, we also try uh, to uh, make it hide these dark, nasty corners of things like WebRTC, for example, so they are like usable. But uh, at the very same time, we try not to make Membrane a black box that you just run and it runs and hopefully it runs and not touch, but rather we try to make it explicit so a user using Membrane learns actually how the media, media is processing and everything is like visible. Also, that approach makes Membrane customizable so that user can create his own plugins and um, plug them into the ecosystem. Membrane is also designed to be a fault tolerant so that uh, if like one stream, processing of one stream fails, then um, the rest of the system can still work and be unaffected. We try to isolate the processing of different media streams so that we can achieve uh, this fault tolerancy. And also we try to um, recover from faults by restarting the affected parts of the system. There are also two things that you have to know before using Membrane. First, it's cutting edge. Uh, despite it's already like five years old, but uh, you know, this is not really JS. Uh, so uh, it's still a little bit new. We use protocols that are already 20 years old uh, sometimes, so those are not cutting edge. And Membrane doesn't aim to be the fastest. It doesn't mean we don't put our effort into performance, but uh, if you have a generic tool, then it always be like slower than like a tool designed for a specific purpose written in low level language, which basically makes it a black box what we wanted to avoid. Cool. Uh, so since we know what is Membrane and what is WebRTC, let me introduce to you React Native Membrane WebRTC library that is created by my colleagues from Software Mansion and that was recently published, which allows you to use uh, the power of Membrane uh, multimedia streaming server to create a video chat in your application in React Native. Uh, so now uh, the time has come for the demo. Uh, as I'm not really experienced in React Native, this may not succeed. I wouldn't be really surprised. But at least I think I will show you some, some useful stuff here. Uh, so what we'll use is the uh, simple application created with this command, npx React Native init, and um, also the library I mentioned, and the memory video room video conferencing server. Uh, so let me go to get to the code, or maybe first let's let me show you the app. I have it on my phone, not in emulator because I struggled to run camera on emulator. Um, okay, so it allows to. Uh, it actually is not not the template, but also equipped with some basic functionality. Uh, it allows to in input username and you can click open video chat, and it says it's a video chat, but it's not. So that's what we are going to change. And we can close video chat as well, and that's basically it. Uh, great. Uh, so uh, let me go now to the, to the code. Mm, I guess I will have to zoom in. Cool. Uh, so 
this is the uh, app uh, TSX file, which uh, handles this basic functionality. Here are some utils, not really important, quite boilerplate like permissions or constants. And here is the actual video chat uh, component that we are going to well, we are going to implement. Uh, so uh, let me start by adding the dependency to our library. Oh, it's here. Uh, this is the yarn add. And it's done. And since it's, it is added, I can now import it. And uh, I will start by connecting to our server. Uh, so oh, it's not really easy to type here, but I will do my best. Console web RTC. That will use uh, a hook, use membrane server. And with this hook, we can, by using another hook, yeah, hooks are awesome, that's what I learned. Uh, by another hook, we can connect to the server. Uh, so we are going to do some async word, uh, work. So let me create a. Uh, oh, not, not like this. Uh, create a simple uh, function. Uh, uh, sync. And that's going to uh, request for camera and mic permissions. So request, request permissions. It got important, imported, great. And then since we have access to camera and mic, we can do webrtc.connect. And here I will pass the server URL that I also have configured. And the room name, we could have multiple rooms, but let's keep it simple and make it uh, one room. And here comes some metadata. And that's how I can pass a display name uh, so that we can know who is connecting. And then uh, when I connect it to the server, and I can actually activate the flow of the media. And I will do that by uh, executing join room. Uh, cool. Uh, then let's execute the function. And return some destructor. So this will be WebRTC disconnect. Great. Uh, so I have that. And uh, now let's render some videos. Uh, so I will add another constant here that will be generated by uh, another hook, use room participants. And this basically allows me to remove that. And for each participant, participant, I can render some stuff. So I will start with some view to make it display properly. And then I will use magical styles flex that is like a magic word that makes everything look good. That's my point of view, at least. And here, I can render member new bar to see. Um, video renderer view that will have a participant ID equal to participants.id. And here I will need a key probably, so it also can be participant ID, why not? And here I can render also a display name. Um, Q 
here it is. And this will contain participant metadata display name. Great. As we passed it before. So uh, basically, if I didn't mess up anything, which again is probable, oh, here also comes proper styling. Um, then I may try to run it and see if anyone is using our application. Yeah, it's going to take a moment. OK, it seems it is running. Let me type some username. That's my name, if you forgot. And open the video chat. I need to allow for mic and come. Oh, and here is something using my app, actually. Hi, Mateusz. No, there's Camilla. Uh, we are backstage. <laughs> yeah, how is it doing, Camilla? Ah, you know, I think the talk's going good. Perfect. So you, you know, I cannot really talk because I'm giving a presentation at AppJS, you know? You're the so, one that called me, so... Oh, yeah, that, that's weird. Yeah, you can see this, this, not, this doesn't have the best quality because of the screen share that comes from my phone to the laptop and then there, so... Um, in my phone is actually quite good quality, and oh, you can see guys. yourself there. <laughs> Where is the camera? Thank you. OK, let me go back to the presentation, even though I don't have uh, much more to show. Oh, this is how it worked 10 minutes or oh, half an hour ago, in case I didn't manage to run it here. And <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, here is the link uh, to this uh, particular example I just showed you on the Membrane Framework Dash Labs organization. And uh, again, link to the um, library. Uh, it's called React Native Membrane WebRTC. And I'd like to also show you uh, at the very end our new web page that we just deployed like yesterday. And it's about Membrane, and it has a lot of awesome stuff here, like uh, resources to learn multimedia. And if you are uh, like fascinated enough to begin your journey with some multimedia, then uh, I think it's worth checking out. And if you're interested in the concept of membrane as well, uh, you're very welcome. Well, enough of this advertisement. Uh, thanks again. Oh, I don't know where is the presentation now. Anyways, didn't have anything more to show. Thank you very much for being with me today. It's been a pleasure to, to be at this conference with you. And um, see you around. Thank you.